great to see you, sir. I want to ask you to respond directly to what we heard from Sergei Lavrov just a few moments ago. He essentially told me that this was all Western manipulation and that the Russians didn't, in fact, attack a hospital, a children's hospital, and a, a ward for pregnant women. Well, unfortunately, I can confirm that uh, Russian leadership, including Minister Lavrov, they live in their own reality. In our talks, behind the closed door, in the absence of the media, he told me, looking in my eyes, that the pictures of pregnant women being taken from under the rubbles of uh, the maternity house are fake. That they hit the maternity house as a military target because the Russian military was absolutely sure that it's, uh, it's under the control of Ukrainian army. And when I said to him, how, can, how could pregnant women uh, be pictured there, he said, it's fake. So it's, they live in their own reality, and perhaps it's good for all of us to allow to contain them in that reality. But before doing it, we have to take them out of Ukraine. Talk to me about the situation at home for you. Well, we have a real tragedy unfolding in front of our eyes. It's the city of Mariupol, and I spent large part of today's conversation trying to arrange a humanitarian corridor from Mariupol so that everyone, the most vulnerable parts of the population could leave and more humanitarian aid could be brought into the city. Unfortunately, Mr. Lavrov said he has, he's not in a position to agree on this, uh, this uh, and uh, I I feel very bad about it. This Don't you find it strange that the foreign minister would come here and then have no ability to negotiate the key elements that you're looking to resolve, at least in the short term? That was one of the issues I tried to figure out. I said, okay, we are foreign ministers. By definition, we have the power to make decisions. Uh, and uh, it seems to me he has a different understanding of the role of a foreign minister because he always referred every issue to someone else's responsibility. What was it, do you think, that he was at least hoping to accomplish today? Uh, I have my thoughts, but uh, I don't think uh, it's really time to, to disclose them. But uh, definitely he uh, did not have sufficient amount of authority to make any deals today. He came to talk, to listen, and I very much regret because his, uh, it was, you know, more people will die because of his inability to make decisions. Describe to me the actual situation on the ground, in your view, when it comes to Ukraine's ability to fight back. Because we understand all of those Russian troops that were along the border for so many weeks. You and I talked about it three or four different times prior to the invasion. They're all now inside Ukraine. Well, on the eve of the, of the war, uh, defense analysts gave us, what, uh, maximum two days uh, to sustain the, Russia, the pressure coming from the Russian army. We have two weeks of war behind. Russia did not reach any strategic objective in Ukraine. Uh, it, ca it comes at a high price. Our civilians get killed. Our cities are being destructed. Russia follows the tactics it used in Syria by uh, air, air raids on cities, on civilians. But we fight against them because it's the people's war. It's not, the, it's not only the government and the army who are fighting against the occupants. It's the entire people of Ukraine who are fighting against them. And this is why I have no doubts that in the end we shall prevail. President Biden this week deciding to sanction the export <coughs> or rather import of Russian um, oil and gas products to the United States. Not really hitting the U.S. economy directly pretty hard, but certainly raising oil prices globally. There's been a lot of conversation about what's going to happen next there. The EU, though, seemingly very reluctant to do something similar. Do you think that's a mistake? Uh, actually, I appreciate that the United States, United Kingdom, Canada decided to go along with these sanctions without uh, Europe when they realized that Europe is not ready to join them. It's it, not that they're not ready. They can't afford it, literally. Yes, yes. This is, this is the issue. But now I'm curious to see whether the plan to phase out Russian gas and oil from the European market is real one, and what is the timeline of that plan. If, I see that, if we see that, the, uh, that Europe is dedicated to phasing it out within a reasonable t term of time, then we understand it was not a trick, it was a responsible decision not to join embargo now. But if this is not the case, then we, can, we will come to the conclusion that uh, Europe is not going to get rid of uh, Russian influence because Russian gas and oil means Russian influence in politics uh, in Europe. And that's what Europe has to clear itself of. Yeah. Talk to me about what we heard from the president, President Zelensky, over the last 24 hours. He seemed to be suggesting in an interview with ABC News that he would be willing um, to take a step back 
from NATO membership for Ukraine in exchange for certain guarantees from Russia? NATO is somewhere ahead. We all uh, realized in the last months and especially weeks that first NATO cannot get us on board within, any, uh, within the foreseeable future. And second, NATO is not ready to act as an alliance to defend Ukraine. In fact, what happened at NATO, they delegated cooperation with Ukraine to member states uh, to do it on a bilateral basis. This poses a question, what is between now and somewhere then? We need to fix problems today. We need to save our country. We need to save lives of our co-patriots. And this is where President Zelensky comes from. He says, we need an agreement now with hard legal agreement with hard security guarantees coming from Russia, but also from other, per, from other permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, from Turkey. Turkey is not a threat, but it's important to have, uh, to have a collective set of guarantees. This is the, uh, the line that, uh, the, the line, the way, this is the way that President Zelensky thinks. Yeah. Do you anticipate that we'll see more sanctions on Russia? Because at this point, <coughs> they are facing a major economic crunch. And I'm talking about $40 billion plus of debt default. There's not that much more that one can do to Russia's economy. And yet Vladimir Putin is still in the midst of an invasion of your country. President Putin pretends that uh, sanctions do not affect his economy. And, uh, uh, but this cannot last long. And therefore, the sanctions pressure must be stepped up until he makes a decision to stop this aggression. Uh, what are you asking for specifically? Well, first, we need to disconnect all Russian banks from SWIFT. The first target must be Sberbank. Second, uh, we believe it's important to freeze all correspondent uh, accounts of Russian banks and Russian uh, oligarchs and, uh, uh, in Western banks. Third, uh, Europe should introduce ban on entry of Russian ships into uh, their ports and the processing of cargo um, designated to Russia. And the last element, I think it's a moral our duty of responsible international businesses to withdraw from Russia completely under these circumstances. Because every dollar they make on the Russian market is an investment in the Russian aggression. Yeah, we've seen an exodus of businesses uh, from Russia in recent more weeks. More have you. to come, more have to, more have to leave. Finally, sir, when we talk about certain guarantees, Luhansk and Dugnesk, talk to me about these areas and what you would potentially be willing to trade for peace. Because there are questions about whether or not Crimea, for example, you could continue uh, to call it part of Ukraine and yet have no plans to fight back and take it back for yourselves. I mean, what is the guarantee that you're looking for? Mm, territorial integrity of Ukraine is not a bargaining chip. Uh, things can depend on time, uh, on uh, the specific format of how we reintegrate these territories, but we are not abandoning any single piece of our territory, and the President has been very clear on that. It is true, though, that priority number one today is to stop the war and to make Russia withdraw its forces as of 24th of August, where the war had started. However, the issue of Donbas, the issue of Crimea, they have to be fixed. And when I say fixed, I do not necessarily mean that we abandon. We will abandon them because we cannot. This is not the authority that I have or the president has. It's only the people of Ukraine who can decide on the future of certain part of Ukrainian territory. Uh, so this is really not something that is pressing. What is pressing is the end of the war and the withdrawal of Russian forces to the, uh, beyond the Ukrainian border.